Hello and welcome to the QDR Crusaders, episode 168 for October 13th, 2015. My name is Rainbow Plasma. I'm the organizer and host of the podcast, and today I'm joined by... Brenda One, the special guest coordinator. I'm FutterGuy317, I'm the media manager, and this week I'll be editing. And I'm Atma Spark, I'm the questions guy. Hey. Welcome back Hello. to another wonderful episode of the QDR Crusaders podcast. Uh, we had a couple of guests for the last few weeks, uh, in case you missed out on those. Um, but we're back to our regular shtick, riding uh, the four of us. Uh, do we have the four of us last week? I think we've been missing a few people, haven't we? I think we have four of us last week. Okay, yeah, we had four of us cool. last week. Well, we're back oh, to yeah. our normal normal routine this week. Uh, guests are fun, but it's it's always fun to come back and just hang out with four of my friends. Oh. You mean, are you calling yourself a friend? <laughs> I guess I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Most importantly, me. Nice. Yeah. Um so speaking of you, yep. why does your voice sound so good? So I'm not I'm not even sure if people will be able to notice because it's like it's been a week since people have last heard my voice, at least most people. Um See, I think people listen to your voice constantly. Just on loop. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. Max, I've been listening to your voice for three years. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm not sure if people will notice because it's been a week in between um, podcast stuff. But uh, yeah, uh, I got a new mic. I got a bunch of new stuff this week, but I have now upgraded my um, setup, my podcast setup. So I have a fancy microphone with an arm and a, and a pop filter i've got a new headset that's a closed sound stage which basically just means that it won't uh, leak out of my ears and go into the audio recording like it used to um yeah basically my, my audio has been the worst audio it's funny because i started with the best audio when we first started and then everybody else upgraded theirs and mine was just good enough to pass for years and then um just in the last like six months or so it's like yeah mine's kind of been bad so I finally decided to spend a bit of money and get a, a very nice uh, setup. So, yeah, now I'm Worth. back on par with you guys. Hey. hey. Welcome. I'd say get on my level, but look at you. Hey. hey. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure if people... People will probably notice it now that I've mentioned it. Um, I don't know how, how big the difference is, whether or not people immediately went, whoa, or not. But, yeah, new audio well, equipment, think- so... That, 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 I think uh, recently, like, your voice has been kind of tinny in the episodes, and this new mic, like, really projects your bass. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's almost so. like the microphone on my headset got worse o- over time or something. Like, I don't really yeah. know what happened there, but um, that doesn't matter because it's all fixed now. So, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully this will fix our audio problems for the next years um, <laughs> so that we don't have to keep upgrading our audio but i think we're now at all at a point where we've got a, a fairly professional setup which is pretty cool yeah awesome um on the note of things that have changed this week i also i also dyed my hair uh like a ready orange <laughs> mm-hmm. so that was cool i've always wanted to dye my hair a crazy color but i've never actually done it because i'm a wimp and also because i liked the look of my hair like i was like I'm naturally blonde, and I, I, you know, I, I just like the way that my hair looks. I, I've never disliked my hair color, right? But uh, I've always wanted to do it, and uh, I've never done it before. So I finally just decided to buy some hair dye. Got my roommates to help me last night, and dyed my hair. So now I have um, like ready orange hair. It looks really orange, but in person, <laughs> yeah. in person, it's a lot more like vivid and and red. Yeah, um, it looks super orange in the photos. Do you yeah. know what's sweet? You know who else has really bright orange hair? Your OC. <laughs> hey, hey, here, why don't why don't I send you a picture? I'll send you a picture of. I'll try to get my microphone, my headset, my horse, and my hair in one picture for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Right. That's that. That the is so much. <laughs> that is so much rainbow plasma. I don't know like what to do with my. Hair. I can't. I will. I will <laughs> save that to my phone. I just took one. Yeah. Dear nice. audience, please insert ginger jokes down in the YouTube comments. Okay. You know what? So here's the deal. I'm gonna say this once. I hate the fact that everybody's calling me a ginger. It's it's not ginger, okay? But ginger is people orange. are looking at people are looking at the thing. Yeah, right. But what what I'm saying is nobody who's seen me in person has called it ginger because it's a different looking color in person than it is. I know coming out it yeah. totally is. Yeah, but it's a, jokes. It's like a blood orange, kind of. In a way. I don't know. It's ready it's orange. It looks orange. good. I like it. Uh, it came out a lot better than I thought it would. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited. So I'm gonna have that for the next like four to six weeks, and I've still got like yeah. three quarters of the bottle of hair dye. So 
I might keep awesome. doing it. So yeah. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Find yeah. a street cat and dye it. <laughs> uh, no, no thanks. I put, just put it in my roommate's shampoo or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that'd be really bad. Um, yeah. So uh, I also had some big changes this week, but I don't really want to get into them yet because things are still being finalized. But next week I'll talk about. Go them, you. So. Yeah, do the thing. Yeah, they're, they're, they're awesome changes. Yeah, they're good things. So. Good job. Yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> getting married? No, J.K. <laughs> To myself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Why do you have to... Dude, actually, oh. funnily relevant on that is... Uh, I that Totally, there's a piece of fan art we got that I never like showed you guys and I still need to take a picture of. Really? Jowie, Jowie Bean, wow. when he... Uh, Thanks. Sent, sent, Jowie Bean, when he sent me a, uh, a sketch that I wanted from BronyCon, because he couldn't get it done, so he did it in the UK and then shipped it to me, he included an extra sketch... Of of Max and I, what we'd look like once we like got married. <laughs> I suppose it's not true. You have to take a picture of this right now so I can see it. Yeah, sure. Where's my phone? So we can get a reaction yeah. on the podcast. Snap it's it it's me saying, J- uh, "Just think, Ember. This is exactly what we'll look like on our wedding day." And you're like sweating bullets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's like it's like you've proposed to me or something. Yeah, that's weird. Nice. It's kind of weird. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> All right. Well, I totally like. I saw it and I laughed about it, and then I forgot about it. And then I was just <laughs> talking to Jowie Bean the other day, and he's like, "Hey, how did Max like that thing?" And I was like, "Oh, ugh. right, yeah, <laughs> that." He totally <laughs> thought it was crazy. I was like, "Well, <laughs> yeah, like I liked it." <laughs> right, so. Nice trying to save face there with the uh, with Jowie. Yeah. I feel like you know. A lot of times fans don't get to see this because usually it happens off the podcast. This is like the third or fourth time that Burns been like, oh yeah, there's this thing that we got and I forgot to show you guys. One of them was yeah. like three or four months old and we're like, Burnt. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> he just likes keeping them to himself so he can pull them up at like opportune moments. I'm a busy horse, man. It's true. You are a busy and horse. And I am an opportunist, so what can I say? We're all pretty busy hmm. horses. I've only done that once. Oh. Yeah, everyone's phone simultaneously goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, this is awesome. <clears throat> this is exactly how we'll look on our wedding day. Uh, oh my goodness! Wow. Well, that's certainly something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, well, no. that is how it's gonna look, right? So. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. True. No, I think I think I think he got the expression pretty. Good. This would be like, this would be like y- you wake up one day and you're suddenly in an alternative re- reality. And it's like, what has happened? I regret everything. Yeah. <laughs> that's, no, that's really I good. I mean, for one thing, you have to carry burned. So that's, I could know. not carry burned. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I probably it'd could. Probably be, it'd probably be reverse, I guess, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. You could give him a, a piggyback yeah, ride, probably. Yeah, that's the thing. You'd probably pick me up, and then I'd be like, wait, 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 what? <laughs> Put me down <laughs> this instant. Why are you picking me up? I did not give you consent to this. <laughs> yeah, but the expressions are perfect. Like Burnt, you would be completely suave, and Max, I feel like you would be like, "What's going on?" Yeah, whoa, freaking whoa, whoa. out. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't agree to this. I didn't sign up I mean, for this. Yeah, I mean, you did. It's not that the path the in life I chose. That, that was in the contract of the podcast, right? All right. So now we've got the pictures sent, so you can put them on the screen. So let's get yeah. to the art. Art stuff. Okay, so yeah. um. I am first this week for the art, um, and this will come from an artist who should be familiar to anybody else who has been keeping up with the podcast, because we had him on the show two weeks ago. So um, this is called Blood Moon by Blind Coyote, and um, this was a bit frustrating, not because (laughs) it's bad, it's great. In fact, that's why it's so frustrating, because he put it out like two days after... um, Two days after we interviewed him, and I would have loved <laughs> to like bring it up during the show as like a showcase of his art. But you know what? It means that we get to spread it out a little bit more and talk about it a few weeks later. So, so yeah, I wanted Yay. to bring this up. I really enjoy it in general, and I think the thing that stands out to me the most is the colors. The the kind of it, it's not quite pure blorange, but I you know I got to come back to it. I I love the blorange. Gotta love the blorange. Gotta love man. the blorange. Yeah. I love the little like tint of green too, like in Luna's hair and ears and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like and, cyan uh, in her wings. Oh, that's yeah. great! Yeah, there's a green up no, top. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's it's well, it, this piece is kind of littered with little pieces of additional color, right? So you know, you've got kind of the the pinky purple that's streaked through the outside of her mane. You've got the green around kind of like the top of her 
or her ears and her head, right? So, and there, of course, there's the red in in this kind of like sun or the the blood moon rather behind her, right? So, um, you know, it's not quite purely orange, but you can see that the main color scheme in this in this is that kind of contrast between the the blue and the orange. Mm-hmm. Um, something that stands out to me in this picture is the the like the composition of Luna, like with the moon right behind her. Mm. Um, and kind of framed by her wings. Uh, I don't know. It's it's really nice. <clears throat> but I feel like yeah. there's there's a clear emphasis on the character. Um, yeah. There could have been, uh, while well, thinking about the comp- composition from kind of like a theoretical perspective, you could have also done it where I'm envisioning a piece where Luna's back a bit and her wings are bigger and like surrounding the moon and the moon's higher up. Mm-hmm. And so it's more in focus. And what I think is interesting is that he chose, while there is the blood moon and it does exist there, it kind of is used to complement the character and the character is definitely the main focus of the piece. So the circumstance and the moon are just things that add to the character or or kind of surround and complement the character. So it's a very character-driven piece, which is interesting because mm-hmm. I would have suspected that most people would have looked at the blood moon and made that the focus. Yeah. Well, the fact that, that the Blood Moon is right behind Luna's head kind of makes it focus on her because you're kind of, you look at the moon and instead of the moon, you see her. Well, it's so. like, do we keep, you also guys, you guys also keep saying like, oh, we're looking at the character and like Luna and then the moon. But I think what you fail to realize is that technically Luna like kind of is the moon. Whoa. <laughs> That's true. That's Mind true. blown. So it's like we're <laughs> still looking at her and the fact that she's obstructing the moon. I mean, she could be yeah. obstructing the sun. So she is the solar eclipse. Think about it. But it's a lunar eclipse. Whoa. But it's, yeah. Whichever. It's fine. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing? I mean, it's kind of not, though. It's like literally the so opposite. She's, so she's the Earth and blocking the moon? So um, I, that's actually a, a really good point. Um, we should bring up the fact that this was made right around the time that the lunar eclipse actually happened uh, mm-hmm. in North America. Uh, Ooh, I'll put one of my pictures up on the screen. Yeah, I don't remember the exact date of it, but a couple of weeks ago there was like a really uh, there was like a full lunar eclipse. So the moon came out and it was like it was like a reddy orange. It kind of looked like my hair. Uh, <laughs> it was like a it was like a reddy orange. Um, so I, I I imagine this was probably inspired by it, right? I should probably read the description about it. But um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. But yeah, yeah. So so like that is kind of like a relevant thing. Uh, it, it's like. How would I describe it? It's relevant to current events, you know. Um, so that's that's why that's why that's why mm-hmm. I'm saying I know for sure that it's a lunar eclipse because it's based on the lunar eclipse that happened a few weeks ago. Yep. Hmm. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Very cool. Um. <laughs> I like how uh, how she's actually rendered in this too. Um. The <clears throat> the blocky muzzle is always really nice and uh i don't know blind coyote has his own unique style that um i think he's still kind of developing and still changing up Mm -hmm. with each piece and uh this is no different (laughs) so yeah i mean i think we've come to learn i'm not sure about everybody else but at least i can speak for myself that the more and more i go the more i i I seem to notice certain styles that catch my eye more often than others um especially when it comes to anatomy right so how how people Mm -hmm. draw these horses um and and you're right these kind of blockier you know not like perfect angles but but Mm -hmm. it's it's less super round and and more and more of a blockier muzzle that does seem to stand out to me uh we saw that with assassin monkey um and we're seeing it here too that when you go for the blockier muzzles i don't know why but it's just something that's a personal preference of mine that i really enjoy seeing uh, anatomy wise mhm well i mean it also it gives the character kind of more of a um i don't really know the correct word for it on off the top of my head but it's not like a, a foreboding but it's more like a confident look almost like like luna's kind of sharp in the moment like she you know she's owning this lunar eclipse mm-hmm. yeah you'll you'll you know? notice that a lot of alicorns like they'll have that 
more you know the blocky the sharper muzzle um because it's like it's a style choice in the show and so then when you turn into a 3d thing it then becomes a style choice of the artist right Mm -hmm. um i i personally don't lend towards the more blocky style muzzle there's some artists that i like that do really well but it's also not quite my thing because i usually associate it with masculine traits so i associate with a a stallion muzzle is usually more blocky where i'm used to the the what's it the show accurate uh female mare muzzle which is like tiny and round Mm -hmm. um so i usually tend to avoid it on like effeminate characters but i suppose alicorns take like they have like an exception to that rule because they're kind of like this big uh regal blocky vertical subject you know Mm -hmm. yeah there was actually a piece that we featured a while ago i don't remember exactly when but we featured a piece that was luna in the air and i commented on the fact that there was a couple of things in it that made her look like a stallion and I think we talked a little bit about the blocky muzzle there. So you're right. There is kind of like this weird middle ground for the princesses, or at least for the yeah. alicorns, where they have a lot of masculine traits. Hmm. And it's not so much that they could even be defined masculine in, in their traits, especially if we're talking about like show accurate stuff. They just have things that lead themselves to be kind of like regal and commanding of, um, what is it, like... Uh, power or status which usually has to do one with their height and mm-hmm. then also like just how lanky they are um so they're very just you know tall subjects so their limbs reflect that and they're like their neck reflects that right and then they have the more kind of like blocky stout muzzle but it's also still tiny even though it is also pointed um but but yeah it kind of has that blockier sense but um i wouldn't say some of the traits that alicorns have are go to masculine because while they are tall and broad they're also like skinny you know and slim down especially in their limbs like their back legs hardly have any girth at all so but when you look at like a pony like um big mac you know he's the prime example where he's like big broad chest wide body thick like all his limbs his hooves are thick um that gets into the more masculine traits versus what alicorns represent you know what i mean yeah mm-hmm. i suppose I, i'm i'm not I, I wasn't trying to say that it it was yeah no um, like they they repu- represent masculinity. <clears throat> I think it was just more that they have some things that can be um, viewed as potentially masculine. Yeah. I was just mm-hmm. I was basically just arguing that, and that I there's parts about it that I disagree. But also in to also clarify in the Luna piece that you were specifically referring to, there was a lot of stuff in that that did have uh, yes traits that, that one kind of for like, sure. Like this piece uh, yeah. in particular, I don't look at and and see a lot of masculinity within it. Um, whereas you were mentioned the one that we mentioned before, um, it it definitely it it yeah. definitely had a lot more things. It wasn't just the muzzle. I remember we 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 had a good discussion about it, and if I can find the episode for it, I will. I will link it for you guys, but but yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I, I I like the piece overall. It, the colors really stand out to me. Uh, I enjoy the anatomy. Uh, the pose was really cool, and I like the fact it's it's centered around a current event. I think that's a really cool addition. Yeah, I enjoy stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. I like her eyes too. Mm, yeah, the the kind of the reverse pupil mm-hmm. where it's it's white instead of black. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it I it enjoy that. doesn't always work well, but it looks alright in this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that it kind of works because there's these other points of very bright um, colors. Yeah, that, that's a balance out. Yeah, that, that's a point. Yeah. It's also she's also supposed to be kind of like glowing with power, you know. So her shoe, her little Luna shoes are glowing, and like her cutie mark, the moon is like disconnected from her and glowing, and so her eyes uh, reflect that as well. Yeah, maybe she's blocking the sun. Told you from the moon, and uh, yeah, you did. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> called it. Uh, <laughs> and maybe maybe her pupils are reflecting the sun. <clears throat> yeah, okay, fine. I'll give you that one. Uh, All right, shall hey. we move on to the next piece? Who's it? Yeah, it's sure. me. It's oh, yeah. You. All right. <clears throat> so the next uh, piece is mine, and the piece that I chose is A Dream Caused by Eating a Magical Moss, um, and it's by Cannibalus. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, but yeah, I really like this. I think it's very cute. Um, and the reason why I wanted to feature it is it actually reminds me of a German artist that my parents really love. Um, so fun fact about my father, if no one knows, uh, I don't think I've talked about it before, but he actually immigrated from Germany when he was eight. So he holds a lot of love for things that are very German heritage and stuff. And so like, uh, my grandmother was very, very German and she was around for a very long time. And so, and all around my house, I've had a very German like influence and things like that. 
And so there's an artist that my parents both really love, and his name is, I forget his full name, but uh, his name is basically Schlitt, is what it is. And he's a very famous German painter who would always paint gnomes. So he's a, <laughs> he's a German painter fam- famous for painting little gnomes. And he would always paint these little scenes of gnomes talking with frogs, sitting on mushrooms, and talking with bugs. And like sitting there like uh, smoking their little gnome pipe or something, and then like having a conversation with a beetle or something like this. So <laughs> this kind of like crudely painted uh, in like the grass in different areas and like still being a little rough in the scene where Derpy is very, very small reminded me me of one of these uh, Schlitt paintings that uh, uh, that have been on like postcards and stuff that actually hang around like my house and stuff like that. Um, so this, so that's why I chose to feature this piece is it reminded me of a very uh, kind of like German esque uh, painter and stuff. And like his paintings go for crazy amounts of money. That's cool. That's, yeah. that's besides the point. Um, yeah. So I liked a lot of little things about this, like how Derpy is very tiny and she's talking to this little like big beetle with the pinchers. And like, I don't even think that he's like kind of having an aggressive thing. Like maybe Derby, Derpy is like hiding from the beetle. I was trying to like, like tell the narrative here. The beetle's like either trying to get Derpy or something, but I feel like the beetle would be right up on the mushroom. So he's like kind of just leaning up there and be like, Hey, like, what are you doing here? What's he's going a, on? He's <laughs> a curious little beetle. It's adorable. Yeah, they're just, yeah. they're having a little, little conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a very loose piece and I think that's a very it's very cool. You know, it's mentioned in the description that it's a two hour art battle, and I wonder if that inspired the kind of style of this piece. You know, it it seems not crushed quick, but but you know mm. it's just it's, something about it where it, everything was kind of like <clears throat> not necessarily yeah. labored over, it's just kinda of like let's just do something. There's a lot of things in areas that are done as if they were kind of done in the area of a speed paint speed paint or like the uh, with that kind of like concept or strategy in mind um when like he was tackling things in this painting so like in the background you can definitely see very loose areas and like colors just kind of like blended together to like represent things like grass and like trees but yet they're still very like loosely rendered and um, there's also like areas in which he painted that you can see colors underneath them with the like the digital brushes that he used like are showing you know the layers of color underneath them also in the grass like up in the foreground and then underneath the mushroom and areas like that but uh there's still there's still areas that are more tightly rendered and have more like defined um uh details like Mm -hmm. in derpy and then especially in the beetle and then like in little spots on the mushroom and then the roots too i feel like are really kind of well done those are he took a little time to render the roots on the left hand side and also that leaf looks very well rendered right Mm. yeah actually Oh, sorry. Go ahead. sorry. I was, I was okay. just going to point out really quick. I was looking at that little leaf on the left and I was liking it. And I think he copied and pasted it to the leaf on the right. They look exactly yeah, the same. Yeah, just fantastic. flipped it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <sorry>. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, yeah, he, he kind of chose a couple of points in the piece to kind of focus on putting a little bit more detail into or like rendering them out a little bit uh, more in detail. It's so like the leaf. And the beetle. And the, and the, yeah. The beetle is really well done for being speed yeah totally yeah. but even With so life. like when you look at it closely there's still signs that it was it might have had a little bit more time but it wasn't something that was necessarily oh yeah no it, it, it's, it's still rushed like not rushed as in done badly but rushed as in just done quick <laughs> but mm-hmm. basically like the details put into um intelligent areas areas that he wanted to push forward so basically like re- the reflection right and how right. like the color blends so like you can see the edge of the beetles carapace or how you say it Uh, and then like the reflection on the top of it and then like details in the eyes feelers pinchers but there's still parts that are done quick like his middle leg on the right hand side isn't attached to his body Mm -hmm. and areas like that we can still see the color through like his left uh hind leg and things like that but uh it doesn't just detract from this quick you know piece you know he painted it quickly if you look at it quickly you can't see any of the stuff that's just like that that like just not connected to the beetle and if you if you look at it quickly and go oh that's kind of cool and move on it it looks amazing Mm -hmm. but then you look at it deep like in depth and you see see all that stuff and you still think it's cool Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. Yeah. but it's also you look at the you look at this and you look at how it's rendered and you don't think that it's done poorly we definitely Mm -hmm. look at it and we think man this is done quick but it doesn't lend itself to being like uh more like a more novice painting or something i i guess yes, i'll say yes, like absolutely. like mm-hmm. yeah the artist definitely knows what he's doing and what he was doing and you can go look through his gallery and there's amazingly like carefully rendered pieces but they weren't done in two hours 
and they lack all these little quick things that we see. So like sometimes I'll see artwork that's also kind of like messy like this and the artist is like, yeah, this is what I'm going for. Um, but then like it doesn't look like it was a speed painting. It just looks like maybe they were just like didn't know what they were doing and shrug. Mm. Um, <laughs> so like I felt like this was a good example of kind of like a speed painting that kind of comes together in a very harmonious way that uh, like that I enjoy and how like the colors are layered. You know? Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like, just the kind of well, I don't I don't really know how to describe it, but it's like the layering um, slash atmospheric perspective. Like, um, th- there's a very large ratio of in focus things, which is kind of very pleasing to the eye in this piece too. And I'm I'm guessing that he thought about that a lot as well. Hmm. Well, you like kind of yeah, go yeah. Ahead. No, I was well, it's just like um. You know, if if you're taking like a photograph, usually the the general rule of thumb is to keep as much interesting things in the frame as possible and leave like the the non interesting thing things like out or like very little. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like that uh, that principle was kind of followed in this. Yeah, as well. and <clears throat> he kind of drives forwards or pushes forward the things that he wants to be focused on with mm-hmm. uh, different aspects like color and like reflection and like highlights. So like the mushroom and the beetle are both highlight and this kind of highlighted with the kind of like bright white and even like the stem of the mushroom. Derpy yeah. as well, you know, she kind of like stands out being so detailed, especially with like her yellow hair and like the mm-hmm. highlights in her yellow hair. But then the uh, things in the background, like they're more subdued, like they're darker colors. Um, and then they have kind of more desaturated palette, you know, so like, uh, I really, I really enjoy the kind of color, color harmony that there's going on in the very like top background with that kind of like dulled gray to see like in the distance, you know, kind of that atmospheric perspective going on and somehow the trees are kind of like obscured. And mm. so like there's this kind of top layer of gray that even like goes into derpy, you know, on the very top part. But then there's yeah. like another layer of like, uh, what is it? Yellow, like brown on the bottom half that kind of takes up the trail, like the beetle standing on. Yeah. And then there's the green that cuts through that. There's kind of like gray, green. Uh, brown kind of yeah yeah I don't know. it's a good color rhythm i suppose mm-hmm. and then the bright red mushroom yeah, yeah. which is an absolute <laughs> like, standout bam straight in yeah. your face fancy compliment <laughs> to the green mind you that's one of the hey. reasons why it stands out so much but yeah it's very vibrant it's very uh vivid and then the real yeah. small pony teeny yeah. pony yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean it's definitely setting up the scene more so than focusing on just a, a particular character which is really cool. Yeah. I, and I do like the um, kind of the, the um, nod to, to Schlick Schlitt. and his stuff. Or Schlitt. Schlitt. And his stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had to look up his name. It's like Heinrich Schlitt or something. I don't remember. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I've, I've heard of him before, but I just. Yeah. Whoa. Cool. Okay. All right. Turn so Google. should we move on to the next piece then on that note? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Awesome. Okay. That's mine, right? That is yours. Mm-hmm. Hey, so I chose this one. It is called uh, Cosmogonal Chris. That's not right. It's Cosmogonal Chris, and it's by <laughs> Satin Space. And I know Burn was really upset he didn't get to feature this one the other week. Mm-hmm. So eat it. I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> if I've told you once. Uh, I've told you a million times. It's not a bad thing for to have someone else feature what you want to feature because it's then basically like you feature two art pieces. Yeah, but. I get to rub it in the space that he didn't get to feature it. <laughs> For the record, it wasn't that I wanted to feature it. I just wanted to feature it over other pieces because it was newer, and then I was upset over that. Right. How do you know? Well, but I'm doing um, it now. So anyway, this is it's crystallized in a um. What we would use? What would you? I mean, I don't know what sort of style of dress you would call that. But. Very like overly Victorian, yet Vic- still yeah. kind of steampunk reminiscent. That's yeah. Right. I was trying to. I was trying to describe that. It's yeah. I think that's so the this, best way. Victorian cross steampunk. So this is this is Saturn space, right? So right. we've brought Saturn space up before. Um, you know, this is kind of what they do. Um, they have a ton of pieces that are this kind of like pseudo steampunky esque kind of like drawings and and a lot of their themes are surrounding this same kind of universe that they've created or, or that they live in um and, and so this is a very common theme for saturn space um i think a lot of people could recognize immediately when they see something like this they'd be like oh this could probably be 
the Saturn space piece because just a, just a surrounding the themes. There's some artists that love to draw certain things a lot, and Saturn space is definitely one of those um, artists. And you can see uh, in just the incredible, incredible amount of detail in everything, the, the minute little details, yeah. that's definitely a Saturn space um, trait. Mm, yeah. extremely like ornate and detailed with all its little like frills and fringes and jewelry gold lots um, of levitating things and also yeah. levita- like yeah, she's got balls cool. in her holes yeah yeah <laughs> yeah there's like levitating things there. you can see it in the horn and you can see it in the like at first it was a bit weird but then i remembered that she is queen cheese legs so yeah <laughs> it all came back to me <clears throat> yeah she's also almost... got him like in her wings and stuff too yeah yeah it it's almost like a faux technology kind of thing because that's yeah. kind of like a that what steampunk is, right? It's kind of like a yeah. technology punk type of type of over ordeal, and so that definitely reflects that with like these floating uh, different like spheres and uh, ornate designs that like are placed in these kind of like cavities, which make them interesting, right? Because mm-hmm. like they would just be holes, like things that lack anything, and so we chose to fill them with kind of like this kind of. Uh, Almost creepy floating jewelry. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe creepy is not the right word, but uh, I actually like it. It's very, very neat, very interesting, very yeah. cool way to like. I don't know, fill in the recesses or like blanks that are left in her person, her body. <laughs> you put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I um, I wanted to mention the fact that something that I think Saturn Space did incredibly well in this piece was something that has nothing to do with the character at all. Look at the background. Background is just so simple it's just like so simple and what it does is obviously we can talk about the color choice but just the simplicity of it i think does a great job of not taking away from the character or making it seem too overwhelmingly um detailed right when it's just Mm -hmm. the character that's detailed and it's surrounded by this darker space around her it really draws your focus in so that you don't get distracted by other details say in the background and i think that was a really good touch yeah, it makes it all about the character and then the things that are detailing the character rather than anything else. Right, which I think is absolutely the direction you should be taking. If you're going to put this much time and effort into it, the character should be the thing that you're looking at. So yeah. right. I just thought that was really cool. It's kind of like a, it's an addition by omission or something like that. Um, <laughs> and I thought that was a, that's a great decision that yeah. a lot of people might miss out on or not think about. Like... This is crazy awesome. It actually brings a word to mind from like, like, man, is there any kind of like artsy term? Is it verisimilitude? I identify this and absolutely not. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But I do like that word. Uh, I was going to say (laughs) that it reminds me of something that is Baroque, which is another art history term, Mm. because the concept of that uh, time in art history is that it was like, what is the most absolute over the top thing that we can possibly make like how much gold and shiny things can we possibly put inside of this church i bet you we could beat that and like that was like the concept like that was like the baroque time right and so like this outfit very much reminds me of that where it's like how much gold could we put and like lace could we put in this outfit nah it's not enough more more (laughs) more gold outlining more jewels and it's just I don't know, it's just really awesome just because there's there's so much in this. Like, if you look at the dress, mm-hmm. like, he painstakingly detailed all the kind of, like, the frill and lace and the dress, how it, like, poofs out and all the edges and the gold mm-hmm. lining and, like, it creases with every, like, roll of fabric that it's it's mm-hmm. it's very yeah. over the top. Very yeah, and along the, along the same note is, like, I'm just impressed at, like, the different pieces of her outfit Uh, because it's not all just like you know one dress it's like there's a whole different like they're all like different styles uh things like there's some flowers there's some like uh gold stuff there's some feathers in her hair and stuff but it all kind of fits and and center space kind of makes it fit in with the whole uh steampunk theme even like if you look at her wings you notice the like the kind of like gold pattern in each uh part of her wing like there's even like Mm -hmm. a little heart in her way hearts in her wings and things like that and the gold outlining it's just it's incredibly intricate well i think i think ted was kind of talking a little bit about something that i wanted to bring up um and what you were kind of i think you were kind of getting to it is Mm. that um this piece when when we're talking about how this piece is depicted right so how saturn space took an idea and managed to put it down onto something physical that we can then look at right so so how the art was actually done we should talk about the fact that 
to think this up, right, to come up with this design <laughs> is in and of itself a, a huge part of this piece. And that was done very well too, right? Like not only he, it's not like he had, or maybe, I, I don't know. Um, but let, let's say, you know, he didn't have someone else to come up with the idea and then kind of describe it, describe it to them, right? Well, they just came up with this idea and they managed to put this outfit together in their head. Mm -hmm. And then the second part of that, which is also impressive, is that they managed to take that image in their head and make it a reality. But it, it, I think, you know, there's credit, credit where credit's due to come up with this in the first place is quite <laughs> impressive. And to, to think of all these details, it's quite impressive. Well, it's like if you look through Saturn Space's gallery, uh, like they're a very, very much kind of a world building artist where they've come up with this kind of steampunk world that's based on a lot of like other steampunky things. But they've like managed to kind of transcend that a little bit and, and you know, create some new concepts and think of things like this. And I think that's kind of what he or she does. Mm. It's, it's impressive. Yeah. Looks good. Mm. Yeah. One last thing before we move on from this one is that wow, nobody else pointed out yet is the is her eye and her hair. Mm -hmm. The amount of detail on those things is comparable to the to her clothing and it's just so overshadowed by everything else. Very opposite to the last piece we featured. I don't think there's a part of this that is not, you know, very finely detailed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very true. Um also, I really like the, if you notice, there's little specks of white intentionally put like yeah. around the character. Glitter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that kind of adds a certain air and like uh, to the character and, and it affects how kind of like how we view her and how she's, she stands. Yeah. Um, very mm -hmm. interesting. I, li I like that fact. Almost magical, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Dandruff. All right. Well, um, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> Dandruff, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's move on to the very last piece, which is Ted's. Fine. So the piece that I'm bringing is called Rainity by Assassin Monkey. Uh, and this is a depiction of the episode where Rarity was doing the whole film noir thing. Um, and uh, it's Rarity and Rainbow Dash in, in the film noir kind of setting. And uh, it, I really enjoy it. I give it's the pun like Monkey six out of ten. Time. Rainity? Yeah. 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 Six out of ten. <laughs> I don't know how you could have made it work better, though. More better? Eh. More better? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know how to make right. that sentence more better, Ted. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I mean, this is kind of... Uh, an, it's an Assassin Monkey piece, so it's really well rendered. I, I enjoy the style. Um, I like the fact that it is black and white and in the film noir kind of thing. Um it it kind of gives it a certain air, and uh, it's very wet. <laughs> it's it's very Faux wet. Film noir, film noir, film, film, film noir. Film noir. Film. Okay, yes. okay. Just make, yeah, I just yeah. didn't know. Yeah, the depiction of water in this piece is really really well done. Um, maybe not like I'm looking at some of the parts of the piece that you might not be drawn to immediately, right? The two faces are the things that are the most detailed and the most in focus. But I think there are certain other parts of the piece, such as the umbrella, which is slightly out of focus, looks great in terms of how it's depicted, uh, how it's depicting the rain. And also mm -hmm. something that's really important is Rarity's tail looks really, yeah. really good. And it, and it mm -hmm. gives this sense of like moistness, you know, it's, it looks it's, so got, dense. it's got water in it, it's you like, know? Mm-hmm. It's also voluminous too. Yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Like you, you mentioned the umbrella, and I think that that is probably one of the the most well rendered things in this piece. Um, and it's it's out of focus. It's not like even uh, like you're not really really even supposed to focus on it. Um, but it's just like the um, the the, the um, good lord. What's the term? The, the lighting that goes through things. Subsurface scattering. Subsurface scattering. Hey, yeah. hey, thanks. <laughs> um, my my brain is fuzzy today. Yeah, I, mean, I, was, I was thinking the exact scattering. same thing. Yeah, hey, the, hey. <laughs> but no, I was thinking the exact same thing where it comes through the umbrella from the back and you get the mm -hmm. um the oh, now I've lost the word something lit from behind. <laughs> Subsurface scattering. No, something lit from behind. Um. 
Oh, oh the silhouette. silhouette? Silhouette. You get the silhouette of the raindrops from the other side. <laughs> Atmos bar kick silhouette? Yeah. 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 Shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, keep going. I like it. <laughs> Me all the things. Please more. Uh, yeah, no, I just, I really like that. I also really like the ground. Um, it's not something that you'd normally notice as well, but it's it's very puddly. The the rain is kind of splashing on it. It's you know again very wet, very well rendered. Gives reflection too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you notice the horseshoe? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's nope. something that Assassin Monkey started doing in his pieces. He started making. He, he's just part of his um his style. His his anatomy style is to to give a little bit of detail at the bottom of the hoof where it's not just like some sort of marshmallow. It's actually mm-hmm. got like a like a solid hoof bottom, but in a lot most pieces, including this one, you don't. It's not emphasized. It's not like brought to the forefront, so you only see like a little glimpse of it here or there, like in this piece. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't call it the hoof though, not a horseshoe. It's like a horseshoe. Yeah, but it's a horseshoe thing, shape. Right? Yeah, but the horseshoe is the shape. I know of it a doesn't have. I know it doesn't the, have a metal a thing on the bottom. <laughs> yes, okay, <laughs> but you know, Semantics. you knew exactly what I meant the second I said it. Though. I, no, I didn't. That's why I was being a bother because I was like horseshoe. Where did I find it? And, and, and you're like, the horseshoe shop. Of, of her, yeah, to shoot yeah, horses just, go to buy shoes. Yeah, just down the street, yeah. next to the hat place. Yeah. <laughs> I'm convinced that ponies buy uh, booties. It's a, actually pony booties. It's a thing. <laughs> so um, another thing that I like about this piece is that it is. Um, it's it's all black and white, obviously, and, and what that does is it really forces the artist to take value into consideration and make it the most important kind of distinguishing um, feature of the piece, right? You don't have things like color to help you contrast um, different things in the scene, so you have to rely almost entirely with uh, value, and I think that's uh, an interesting challenge for artists and Assassin Monkey, funnily enough, if you go and check it out, every single piece that he makes nowadays, he has a work in progress, so you can see some screenshots along the way, and he's uh, a kind of artist that does the value first and then fills in the color later, usually, so this is kind of like how he makes all of his pieces, except he just it's just missing the couple of steps at the end when he adds the color, so yeah. you mentioned in the description, it's like, yeah, now I have a legit reason to keep it grayscale as opposed to having to add color later, so. So I'd be curious, because like, technically these, what is it, film noir is what you said films? Like, in yeah. real life they had color, but then they were shot in black and white, and then those blows, that black and white film wasn't technically primed or like meant to be you know seen in the kind of like a black and white sense you know without value because like some colors could be similar so i'd be curious uh to see how this turned out if assassin monkey started by painting in color and Mm. then desaturated the thing after the fact to see how how it would look i feel like it would be more true but i mean i'm not sure if it would though because the way that he works is he, he starts with grayscale and then adds color yeah, and so that's exactly what I'm saying, and he's used to that, so it looks almost too perfect in black and white. <laughs> right. Yeah. What Burns saying is that a lot of the film noir stuff isn't isn't considered all the time to to be just black and white, and so it won't come out perfectly because when they're viewing the film, they see it in color, right? So um, when they desaturate it later, it not everything well, they, will be perfectly well, like black yeah, and white. They technically don't before. desaturate it later. When they were actually yeah. recording those, they only had black and white film. Right, but, but what but I mean is with their white. eyes, they're seeing it yeah. in yeah. color. Yeah, sure. I mean, it kind of uh, brings into question, and I, I'd have to do some research into this, but I, I'm pretty sure that, you know, in the early days of film, like the good film noir, uh, uh, well, movies and films and shows and stuff like that, um, they kind of had to take into consideration, you know, what... Yeah kind of values yeah of yeah of they definitely did with stuff, like outfits yeah. and clothing and stuff you know how mm-hmm. it would how it would show up on the mm-hmm. film but yes. it was definitely still a problem of like black and white film that sometimes like you yeah. were limited by certain colors you could show yeah. because they looked the same in black yeah. and white mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i mean you have lots of lighting on. considerations to think about too right like you can't change how the sun looks on a building right um mm-hmm. so yeah i mean going on colors that look the same in black and white rainbow dash's hair looks like the colors the way that the yeah. way that he's done that it's not just the shadow it's the fact that it's three different colors and her hair is three different colors in, in grayscale mm-hmm. yeah so I, I was quite impressed by that i mean it's very subdued though yeah 
But I mean, it's supposed very, to be like, so it's crazy. wet and it's dark. But. Well, yeah. no, but what I mean is like, you know, the top of her head is red, <laughs> orange, yellow. Like, it's hard to tell. You can kind of tell where the where the red is. Or like on the right, you can see it's like darker. But like, can you honestly say that it's super easy to tell where the orange and the... Like, it, it's completely different to me. No, I, like, I, I, I think it'd be so much easier if it was in color compared to here. Like, like even though you can look at it, like... I think it'd be very easy to look at Rainbow Dash and say that's potentially another pony. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> when I first saw this, I was like, oh, that looks kind of somewhat like Applejack. And then I was like, no, wait, that's Rainbow Dash. Mm. <laughs> I just I just don't think that... I think that the colors in her hair, like, it's not directly obvious to me that that it's those three colors. Um, it's... I think with the context of the episode, I think it's really easy for me to look at it and be like, oh, yeah, that's probably Rainbow Dash. But I, I don't know. I, I just don't, like, this doesn't make me right or wrong. I just I just saw it yeah. a little bit differently. <clears throat> I think you're both right. I think that uh, I can I can tell that there's, like, a dark side on the right and then there's a lighter side on the left. But I feel like more detail and care is put into making it look wet and look draped than there yeah. is to, you know, stand out the colors because maybe that's not the point because it's supposed to be in black and white. But I definitely feel like there's three shades there. It does go mm-hmm. from lighter to darker. But yeah. I think the consensus is that it looks good in the fact of what it's trying to be rendered and that she's absolutely soaked because that's kind of the cute narrative going on here, right? Well, and it's nice, too, that it's desaturated in a way because it doesn't take away from the the foreground pony, right? Like, there's no colors to kind of draw your attention. Because Rainbow Dash is a character that has the attention drawn to her whenever she's on the screen because she has a lot of bright, colorful features, right? And so Mm -hmm. when you have a situation like this, you no longer have that for Rainbow Dash. And so you can give... You can you can put her in the background and it won't be immediately obvious or stand out or, or she won't take too much attention away when, from, for example, rarity in this piece. When we're talking about things that demand attention, be, um, like it, the only way in which this piece makes that is contrast because there's no yep. color present, right? So it's just the value and then contrast from white to black. And so rarity is the most contrasting thing in this piece. And so if you notice a lot of areas are in Rainbow Dash, she doesn't have a lot of contrast towards like the side of her face or the side of her hair. And then the Mm -hmm. background, there's parts of it that help her stand out. And they're usually done in kind of like a a dark or a shadow Um, where rarity, if you look at her, she's actually lit from both sides, from uh, the front of her face and from the back of her face. She actually has a bright white helping drive forward the contrast even more for her to stand out from the background. And then her black hat and then white coat and then black coat again like black white black white Mm -hmm. Uh, so like she's very very contrasting in comparison to Rainbow Dash which is actually dulled and kind of like again subdued into the background what I find interesting which is actually uh, a good thing that you kind of brought that up because it kind of transitioned into my point um, in that this is a very wet piece there's a lot of like shine from the rain which I think also uh, helps with that contrast and with separation. Like if you look at Rainbow Dash's hair, the very top, the only way that you can tell that that's the top is because there's this thin line of rain reflection uh, from that and the, like, the little happy raindrops kind of bouncing off of her. And uh, same thing with like certain parts of Rarity's tail and stuff. And it's it's like this kind of scene, this wet scene kind of allows for... Uh, contrast to be made in certain areas where otherwise it wouldn't yeah it's a great point yeah. how was Rarity holding that umbrella magic 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 also her horn's gone unicorn privilege. i think you Send can see hat. a little bit of like a bulge at the front oh yeah uh, so yeah. in the episode her horn disappeared though it's true oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's holding oh. the hat up you can see it's at a weird angle i imagine mm. that if you were a unicorn you could probably come up with a spell to like Make your horn disappear. Where, what, you know? where one of the where one of Pinky's umbrella hats? Mm. <laughs> also, right. Rarity, Rarity's got her rain gears. Oh, for God's sake! Oh, hey. I like you. I know. <laughs> Can I describe that joke as Atmos Sparking? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that, that's, that's fairly suppose. accurate. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the uh, questions. Okay. Well, we have two this week. Uh, we we've do. got plenty of time, I guess. Um, yep. All right, so the first one I've got here is, what are your thoughts of artists mixing their own interests with ponies? For example, trains with ponies and airships and tanks and stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, by South Williams. I love it. More of it. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It lends for some really neat artwork. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like rarity and crabs and stuff. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I don't know how someone got so interested in crabs and battles, but... I know, you'll have to ask, what's a Pokemon? You just get, like... Well, like, in my opinion, it's like when people mix certain things that they're really passionate about with other things, like ponies, it lends for some of the coolest and most unique artwork out there. So you have... And passionate. Let's let's name Mm -hmm. a few. So, um, what is it? UC-77, right? With, like, big, Mm -hmm. huge, like, robots and then ponies. You have, like, MC Mares, who does kind of, like... Different really grungy stuff with ponies. Well, the one or, like, that we with guns and ponies. Set in space, steampunk. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah, steampunk stuff. Um, there's also, uh, what is his name? Um, Dim Fan. Uh, mm-hmm. when he does, I really am a really really big fan of his like very kind of like dark war, um, stuff that I might feature pretty soon. Um, mm-hmm. because it's just like it really drives forward like how like deep and dark war is, yet also with this thing that would be happy. So you get this juxtaposition of ponies. <sighs> Um, and you also get silly things too, you know, like plain ponies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah. I think, it, I think in general, the thing is that you're going to get the best art pieces possible when you're properly motivated, when you've got, um, something in your head that you want to do, you know, and, and that you're passionate about and interests just help artists do that, you know, um, you've got a passion for for ponies and you've got a passion for something else you know maybe it's an anime maybe it's a video game maybe it's something like that you know if you can use those both to make an awesome piece then i think that's that's great and and people should look for inspiration uh, in that way all the time i will say <laughs> that when people mix interests with ponies they they risk losing people who aren't interested in certain things although that's not always the case right like there's lots of there's lots of interests that you can mix that I'd still be interested in looking at the art piece, even if I might not be interested in the interest itself, if that makes any sense. Um, but like at the end of the day, artists should make what they want to make, um, and they should make something that they're passionate about, because I think overall that helps uh, create better pieces. And so I say, uh, go for it. You know, you might not always, as a viewer of art, you might not always be on board with the particular interest that the artist goes for, but hey whatever you know like you'll you'll get the next one yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah I, I agree so we to the next question sure okay <laughs> so out of all the artists you've interviewed and showcased showcased who is your favorite and why again by south williams so i wanted to take a i want to take a minute here when i picked this question um we had a little internal debate um about whether or not we were going to actually do this question and the reason is a couple of weeks ago uh, I went on a little mini rant about the fact that I don't like picking favorites because when you pick a best usually that leads to it like someone being worst right and I brought up an example of saying like someone makes a poll for who's their favorite QDR crusader you know yes everybody's picking their favorite but someone will come in last right and so that's not always a nice thing to do um, but the reason why I don't object to this one is because you know, there are so many people that we've interviewed and there's so many people that we've showcased that, um, you know, when when we pick four out of that list, you know, there's hundreds more that we have. So we're really not ranking them. Um, so in case people are confused about the fact that we just had that conversation and now we're picking favorites here, I think uh. they're just two different circumstances <laughs> with a much larger uh, sample size. So that's yeah. kind of my well, logic like, behind it. My major issue with the question is that I don't exactly have a favorite artist that we featured because like i can name favorites i can name artists that i really enjoy featuring because of x and y Mm -hmm. but like there's no like man like this person every time he comes on uh like feature his stuff on the show like yeah like no other artist like like get off the show like there's (laughs) there's not that one artist like there there's basically too many great artists well and we we see so many artists too that i think this this stuff changes over time we also talked a little bit about the fact that you know um a year ago or or however long ago i would have said gray stripe is my favorite artist because you know she was making a bunch of pony stuff and you know it it was relevant to my interests which was last question and and all these other factors but it changes over time you know she stopped making as much art and other artists started making art and so that kind of changes over time so you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be like the perfect answer that will apply to you always, right? It's just kind of like, is there an artist that stands out to you right now? That's kind of how I interpret it. 
Mm-hmm. Hmm. I mean, <laughs> Assassin Monkey kind of jumps right to mind, mm-hmm. honestly. Yeah. Um, just because I always enjoy featuring his pieces and bringing him up. And I think the fact that we've kind of watched him grow uh, while we've done this show and vice versa, and he's always kind of been a huge fan and we've always been huge fans of him and stuff. And it's just like, I think it, more so than like on an art level, I think on kind of a more, a more personal level, I, I really, um, I guess, appreciate him. He's also one of the artists who's been around the longest and also mm-hmm. just like he constantly uh, wows us. And so like even three years down the line, we've talked about this many times, but he continues to wow us and how mm-hmm. he improves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. And like uh, like like the other guys, I'm, I'm not really a fan of picking favorites, um, but, you know, it's just he kind of pops right into mind as someone who like I, I we've never featured a piece and had like and I have felt uncomfortable about it being on the show. It's it's always been like, wow, yeah, this is really good. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah, and he's adorable in person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he is. He also gave us stroop waffles. Stroop waffles. I still, I still have a stroop waffle. It's probably bad now, huh? Um, no, yeah. they last a really long time. Can you not just buy them? Like in the in the shop. Money lasts forever. I mean, on I Amazon, guess. but uh, yeah. Okay, we, we can just same. buy them in the supermarket here. Ooh, yeah. fancy. It's not, it's right. not the same, though. <laughs> it was assassin monkeys, stroop waffles. <laughs> he touched them. <laughs> they touched them? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> a, monkey fl- a monkey flung a banana at me once. What wow. a rude monkey. I know. <laughs> um, Who's your favorite artist, Joel? I'm <laughs> trying to sakes. think. Like, I'm, I'm trying to... Th- like, I can't... I'm trying to think. Like, I don't really have a favorite in terms of art because, I mean, if we feature on the show, we, we like them, right? But I'm trying to think, like, who we've had the most fun with on the show. I can't decide. Like, we've had fun with heaps of them. White Diamonds, Nazi Goring, Saoshin. We've had so many great people in here. I just can't pick. Mm-hmm. Like, we've, we've had so much fun. I just, I just can't. Dave. Sibzy. Yeah. Can't choose. true. Told you. See? Yeah. Unreasonable. <laughs> Your demands are <laughs> not hurt. So, yeah. Myers is a cop out, but I don't have a favorite. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, uh, there are some artists that I really enjoy seeing on the show for usually the reason that their art is very unique. I think that I really enjoy uh, when uh, we feature an artist where, like, I can I can see their art and I'm like man, there's hardly any other artist out there who does something like this or does something this, like, well. Um, and so to name a few of my favorites, like, uh, Flea Bites comes to mind uh, mm. and how uh, she, like, renders things and, like, it's always so organic and flowy. Um, and then, like, uh, how, like, Hoosie and AJVL paint things. I see Cosmic Unicorn falls under those, uh, like, groups of painters. Um would uh, IOPCO be one of those? For yeah, color? we don't we don't feature IOPCO a, a lot, but uh, yeah. sh- uh, she does something very unique with color uh, that that I really enjoy. So like when we feature when I, I guess we featured IOPCO before, but a lot of the stuff yep. we can't feature. Blitz pony, but it's like really really bright and vivid and crazy looking, and I really dig that. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, watercolor artists always like when, uh, but I guess certain types of watercolor artists because they have preferences. <laughs> so like Blixit, I really enjoy. Um, mm-hmm. She's probably my most favorite. Where uh, some other watercolor artists that we featured before aren't really on my favorites list. Um, cool. Yeah, mm. stuff like that. Okay, uh, Max, did you have anyone? Because you said gray stripe from before, but yeah, well, that's what I was mentioning. Like stuff changes over time, and it's kind of, you know, just relevant to whenever you ask, right? Because different artists stand out at different times. Mm. Um. <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna take Joel's uh spot and pick mm-hmm. you because he reminded me that the question wasn't just about artists but also or not just about art that we've seen but also about artists that we've had on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'll I'll do two to make up for his. Uh, okay. The first one is um, recently I've uh, well not only not only gotten to know uh, Shinoda but I really really enjoy his uh, art style his anatomy. Um, he did a recent little series uh, of things like derp faces for like otaku and burned and stuff. And oh, wow. those things are just like the best. Um, 
and and i i really i think he's kind of come into his own in the last kind of six months and uh yeah so i really really enjoy his art style and i every single time i see something like i can't wait for his next piece so that's really awesome dude is an Argentina baller. Yeah, yeah. And and, mm-hmm. and I mean part of that is influenced by the fact that like I've gotten to know him in the last like uh you know, year or so. So that's you know, it's been nice to nice to get to know yeah. him as well as Such a person. A sweetheart. Um mm-hmm. yeah, no, he's super nice. Uh and, and on the subject of super nice, um, I wanted to talk about my favorite person that we've ever interviewed, and it continues to be to this day, uh, White Diamonds. Um Every single time I talk to her, yeah. I walk away with uh, a sore face because I've smiled so much. Yeah. I um, wish, yeah. I really wish you guys could have met her. Yeah, I know. Like, like uh, it's, it's. We've, we've only, I've only talked to her twice. Like, we've only interviewed her twice, and those are the only times that I've talked to her over like voice chat. Like, we, you know, there's like, you send be- messages back and forth. Sometimes it's organizing podcast stuff, but, um, but yeah, like every single time we've had both the interviews. Uh, there's just something about her personality and the way that it meshes with ours that it's just it's a delight every single time uh, I walk away like I said with a sore face because you just smile for two to three hours while talking to her so um, without it without a doubt uh, White Diamond is is someone who I consistently um, smile and that applies to her art too she also makes fantastic art so mm-hmm. so yeah those those are my two picks mm. yay okay but I was in love you. <laughs> so good at stuff. All right. Well, those are the questions. Where's my so team? So I suppose we should <laughs> go to do. the plugs. All right. Pluggerinos. We're not doing we're not doing the artist name game this week, but we should bring that up again sometime. We should. Yeah. Okay. So with more time. Yeah. Plugs are yep. as follows. Uh, we have Picado.tv slash Kyrie Crusaders is where you can watch our stream every Wednesday if you're in the Southern Hemisphere and Tuesday in America. <laughs> Kyrie Crusaders. The Southern Dino. Hemisphere com. has nothing to do with time zones. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm really the only yeah. place in the Southern Hemisphere that matters, am I right? True. <laughs> we literally wow. just talked about someone from Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> eh, I don't care. Kyrie Crusaders. Wow. com. Cutie Crusaders at gmail.com, youtube.com slash cutie crusaders, cutie crusaders.tumblr.com, facebook.com slash cutie crusaders, and at cutie crusade on Twitter. Somebody brought up that it sounds dumb without the RS on the end of that, but that's all Twitter will allow. So, Well, yeah, mm. it sounds dumb, but there's nothing else we could have done. Uh, I know. I guess we could have mm. done Cutie Crusade podcast, sounds sweet. but that sounds dumb Forget too. you. <laughs> Cutie Crusade sounds awesome. Like, like yeah. Twitter literally does not allow us to. Like that's the longest you can get, basically. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. The, like the, the extra RS goes over the character limit for a we name. So blame yeah. Twitter. The non-believers of our name. <laughs> wow, it's fine. All right. Well, that is everything for this week, guys. Uh, unless any anybody else had anything else to add. <clears throat> I'm still yeah. sick. And Burn's I don't still sick. sick. There's probably a spoiler cast after this. I totally forgot to mention, but it's Canadian Thanksgiving this weekend. Uh, yeah. it, just, yeah, it just slipped my mind so i, I won't no idea, be here so. for the spoiler oh, yeah. cast so uh yeah so it's just cast. but there is a, but there is a spoiler cast yeah so. it'll be just me hopefully yeah, hopefully I'll come on here. someone's gotta someone else has gotta <laughs> help i'll Joel be out. here hey. we've missed you, you guys it. you tough. can edit again though if you want <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah there will be a spoiler cast afterwards i won't be there because i will be off at canadian thanksgiving so uh happy thanksgiving to any enjoy your uh, canada turkey yeah, yeah it's gonna be good. Eat. I actually have, have a story. Uh, yes, we have Canadian geese, but you don't eat them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've actually got a story relating to Thanksgiving, but I will save it for next week. I think um, it's an it's a kind of an interesting story. Uh, but yeah, I, I'll leave that until next week. Right. So raise your gooses. Yeah. Hey. See you next week. I, I wonder if you guys will actually like. I was I was wondering if you guys would actually if I told you now whether or not you'd remember ever that it was Canadian Thanksgiving. Yeah. Because, like, usually I'm away on Canadian Thanksgiving, but luckily I was here for this one. Um, mm. But whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, yeah. And that's everything for this podcast, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed my new microphone. Hopefully that stops <laughs> any blech audio from coming through. Um, I've enjoyed it. It's without very, further very ado, pleasant. thank you guys for watching. Whether or not you're on the live stream or on YouTube, we love you all the same. My name is Rainbow Plasma. My name's Burned. I'm FutterGuy317. And I'm Atmospark. Bye. Bye. Spark. I'll see you next week. <laughs> Who sneezed? <laughs> <laughs>